It's March. I've got my bushcraft gear with me. I'm bushcrafting in March. Just before we dive into the main meat of today's video, if you're not yet a subscriber and you like the look of this video, you like the look of the channel and you'd like to be a subscriber, there's going to be a red subscribe button throughout this video in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Click on it, become a subscriber and you won't miss any of my future videos. Cheers. Hi folks, I'm Craig Taylor and as always a huge thanks for joining me here on my YouTube channel, The Bushcraft Padawan. Regular viewers and subscribers will know that I like to get out and spend an entire day or an entire night and a day out in the woods doing bushcrafty stuff and March is no exception. Here I am again. You'll also know if you're a regular viewer that rather than just come out into the woods and potter about, I always like to come out with a plan in mind, a list of things that I want to cover off and this month is no exception either. Things that I want to cover off and things that I want to look at and try. I want to try and get my fire going today using um, bow drill. Once that fire is going I'd like to make myself some pine needle tea. I haven't done that for a while and I'm feeling a bit under the weather um, so I want to try out some pine needle tea, whack my body full of vitamin C. I want to cook a new recipe that I've discovered in a in Tim Gent's campfire cooking book. It involves baking or cooking eggs inside tomatoes which sounds quite inventive. I want to make myself a broiler to toast some bread with. There's probably a much quicker and easier way of toasting bread on an open fire, but I fancy giving the broiler technique on. I'm making a broiler to do that because I've never done that before. And throughout the day, I also want to weave in some tree and plant ID where the opportunity arises. So quite a lot to do today. It all starts off with, uh, with gathering those resources for the fire. So why don't you join me and see how March's bushcraft day unfolds. I've just retraced my steps a few hundred metres because on the way in I thought I'd spotted some decent dead standing and in fact this specimen that's right in the centre of the shot now, if we follow that up, you should be able to see, and I admit it's probably difficult to make out, but just underneath where my finger is now, we can see the actual tops of those have completely gone, completely gnawed off, chewed off or fallen off and actually on closer inspection everything below it is completely dead. So I'm going to take one of those limbs, one of those uh, those those uprights there, and that's going to be my fuel for the day. Decent pile of fuel going on at the moment. I've also got the uh, the thicker end of that tree that I just took down still on the uh, the sawing horse over there. If I need more, I don't need a massive fire. I don't need a long running fire. What I need is a fire to to be able to boil some water and then to be able to boil uh, burn down to the coals and the embers to allow me to uh, to cook this egg in tomatoes so I don't need a long standing fire it's not a long recipe but I do need to be able to build up a decent bed of embers so I've gone for a little more fuel than I normally do just to cook a pancake or just to uh, to boil some water or something like that a little more but I haven't gone overboard no need to chop up more than I actually need so I've got the fuel I'm going to work backwards now and I'm going to go and look for some um, for some kindling I'm going to try uh, the old favourite of some um, silver birch twigs, Betula pendula, to act as the kindling. I've got a decent and growing armful of silver birch, Betula pendula twigs and finger thickness and pencil lead thickness there and I just sort of looked up and, and took my focus off the silver birch that I was looking for and realised that I seem to have landed in honeysuckle or lonicara periclinum heaven. There's absolutely stacks of it here we can see here just peeling off 
in my hand. So that's going to lend itself to being a great tinder bundle for when I uh, hopefully elicit an ember from my bow drill. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time around here now focusing on this element of the fuel process because uh, I think I've got enough silver birch twigs for the time being. I'm happy now at this stage that I've got everything I need to start bringing to life and, and continue my fire. Moving from the far left of the screen then, we've got my bow drill set there, we've got the honeysuckle, then we've got the um, silver birch twigs here, we've got some very fine kindling that I've split down for some pine log that I've discovered, and then far right hand side, there's the fuel that I felled earlier on. Bow drill into the honeysuckle, honeysuckle alight, fingers crossed, igniting the silver birch, silver birch igniting the small pine kindling, then I can feed on the larger pieces of fuel. That's the theory anyway. I've now theoretically got everything I need in place to, to start and to build this fire. I want to start thinking about making this broiler. Now until recently I didn't have a damn clue what a broiler was. I could picture it, I'd seen people using them, I knew what the purpose of them was, but I didn't know that that's what they were known as. Essentially they're a grill, um, a, a, a handmade grill out of woods, out of twigs, at the end of a long handle that you can grill slash cook things over the fire. Um, Imagine a tennis racket, but with a really long handle made of natural wood and on the, on the mesh you can place bacon, thin pieces of meat, bread, things like that. And that's what I want to build out today. Thank you to Tank Tracks Outdoors on Instagram. Um, it was one of his posts quite a while ago that just got me thinking, I want to create one of those. I'd seen him in other videos, but it was here, it was that guy there that kind of put me on to thinking, yeah, I want to pull my finger out and make one. That's what I'm going to do today. That's what I plan to do today. I just need to go and look for the materials, figure out how to create it. And then once, of course, that's in place, I can get the fire going. I didn't want to start the fire, then run around like a headless chicken looking for the materials and figuring out how to actually create one. So I want to get all of my dominoes lined up, all of my ducks in place first, then go for the fire. Fingers crossed. I found something here that I think will work. It's green wood. It's a fairly thin, pliable, bendy, but still with some strength branch. And you'll notice that it's got this Y here, with one branch of the Y being slightly thicker than the other. The thicker branch of the Y, I'm just gonna leave alone. That's gonna be there um, just to secure the thinner, bendier, more pliable um, branch of the Y junction two. It still looks quite messy at the moment. It's much, much bigger than it needs to be. I need to trim off all these really, really thin shoots at the side. Trim it all so I can see what I'm working with and then I'll come back and show you what it is that I've done and how I've done it. Ta-da! There it is, my, my Mark 1, my Mark 1 broiler. Let me stand back a bit so you can see this. So, there's a handle, I would hold that or potentially prop that up against something so that it would self-elevate. I could put on this, this grill, if you like, whatever I wanted to cook, assuming it wasn't small enough to fall through them, and then I could, you know, I could cook away over the fire. If that was self-supporting, it can be cooking whilst I'm doing something else. My plan today is, <laughs> talk about overkill, is just to put a piece of bread on there and toast a piece of bread to dip into my eggs and my tomatoes, assuming that I get them cooked. Um, bit overkill, you can see that's clearly the biggest slice of bread known to man, if that's all I was gonna put on it. But you get the general concept, and that's really all I wanted to do today, was just play around and figure out how it all fits together, how it works, and fingers crossed, if I can get this fire going, we'll see this in action later on. Definitely not what it looks like in Morse Kahansky's book, um, Bushcraft. Definitely doesn't look like this, um, but I think the general concept is still the same. We'll find out, won't we? 
I've collected and processed my tinder, my kindling, my fuel. I've made a broiler. I've been to get some pine needle for my pine needle tea. I've put off the inevitable for as long as I possibly can, but there's no getting away from it. I'm gonna have to break out the bow drill kit. Ta-da! Okay, this is a previously crafted bow drill kit. Sycamore. With sycamore with a horn beam bearing block and my bow is sat on the bench behind me. These have worked on the two occasions that I've used them in the past. They've both worked first time perfectly. I think I've still got a little bit of life still in that um, half board there. I've still got a fair amount of life left in this spindle but I am going to need to just shape up and rough up the ends again. Plenty of life left in the old horn beam yet. So yes, I'm not crafting a bow drill kit from scratch today. What I am doing is practicing my technique with a set that I know works. I want to focus on technique today and not crafting the set. So I'll get on with, uh, with just reshaping the ends of this spindle and then I won't be able to put it off anymore. Let's get cracking. first effort didn't work. Um, lots of squeaking, lots of groaning, lots of, um, lots of dust, but just didn't consolidate. You don't know if you can see that, but I'm, I'm almost all the way through the half board there. So I've just taken out a few minutes. I have a second spindle with me. I'm just going to carve out a second notch in the half board, carve the V into that, and then go with that. But yeah, first time, today unsuccessful with that particular um, approach with bow drill. Second time lucky. Yes, another bow drill success. I never get tired of it. Let's have a talk through this recipe that I've discovered then in, in Tim Gent's campfire cooking. <laughs> Seems quite simple, which of course is zero guarantee that I don't screw it up. It involves a tomato. It involves an egg. It involves salt and pepper, if you remember to bring it out. And it involves some silver foil. Quite simply, you leave it chop the top off the tomato, scoop out the inside, crack the egg into the now empty tomato, wrap it up in some silver foil, bake it in the embers for about 15 or 20 minutes. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, keep watching and I'm sure you'll find out.
there we have it. Simple as that. If only I could eat them as it is without making them go anywhere near the fire, I think we'd be laughing. But let's get that fire some time to, uh, to burn down to embers. Let's not write it off completely. Let's see how we get on with it. Day's been going really well, hasn't it? Fire by friction using the bow drill, brilliant. All of the kindling and fuel and tinder that I sourced this morning is working well. I've prepped my eggs um, in tomatoes, they're in the embers. I've made a broiler, I've just had a bite to eat, I'm making pine needle tea, everything's going really well. I think to myself, ah, I know what I'll do. I shall set up my broiler with my bread on top and I'll toast some bread to dip into my eggs. The broiler has been eaten. There's the culprit skulking off there. She's eaten the broiler. The broiler that actually took me significantly longer to make than it appeared on camera. I had several attempts at making that and she's eaten it. So, um, yeah, no toast to dip in, or at least no broiled toast to dip in today. Just look at just look at the guilt on her face and remorse and regret. Absolutely none. Acres and acres of woodland, tens of thousands of branches and twigs, and of course she had to eat the one that I'd made a broiler out of. Bad girl. Well, that's the egg and tomatoes done. I've just lifted it out. Dropped it into this little Tupperware box I brought out. Here's the egg. Oh, look at that. Possibly ever so slightly for my liking, overdone, but, but not a great deal to be honest. And, you know, it looks gorgeous, doesn't it? it smells fantastic. It smells wonderful. So yeah, I'm gonna take the other one out as well because clearly that's gonna overcook as well, but very, very happy with that. That was probably in about 20 minutes. I would probably go for the 15. Uh, in the future, but really, really happy with that. Mmm. Oh, it's just so tasty. Mmm. Yeah, that is nice. Where's your paw? 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 Well, that was a busy old day and a fun day indeed really enjoyed today everything sort of fell into place from the tinder kindling fuel collection that just kind of happened it was quite quick everywhere i looked for the for the resource it was there i was able to tune my eyes into what i was looking for really quickly the bow drill worked in the end i almost gave up after that first dr drill into that existing notch i almost gave up and thought you know what i'm just gonna admit defeat and go for um go for an alternative fire starting method but i stuck with it i carved another notch in my head it always takes longer to carve the notch than it actually does and i should have learned this by now but i've still got this kind of mental block that tells me that the notch carving takes so damn long I think that's from the very first time I ever carved the bow drill set. I was using a crap knife with a with a blunt blade that took forever to sharpen and then lost its edge just you know much more quickly. So I think I've got this kind of mental block around how long it really does take to carve a notch in a half for a bow drill. I'm pleased I did it though because as you saw. I was able to uh, achieve an ember and blow that into flame. Brilliant. Those eggs and tomatoes. Wow. Really, really, really tasty. I'd probably only do them for 15 minutes in the future. I'd probably also add a little salt and pepper into the bottom or the top of the egg once I'd cracked it into the tomato. But other than that, really, really nice indeed. If you've not tried it yet, big recommendation was the next time you have an open fire, 
try that recipe. Incredibly nice, incredibly tasty and very quick and simple to do as well. Should we not mention the broiler? Where is she? Willow, should we mention the broiler or not? No, gone all quiet and innocent on me. Let's not mention the broiler. Let's let's reattempt the broiler when we come back out again. Maybe without the dog this time. Or maybe I'll be more observant as to what she's actually chewing in the future. Thank you as always for watching. Really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, all the usual jazz. And I'll see you very shortly in my next video. Cheers.